What is up, my sexy programmers? Real Touch Female here, and today we are continuing with our Java series. And uh, today we're gonna go ahead and start up the player class, maybe get some keyboard input in there. Because if we play it right now, uh, we have nothing here. And for my last tutorial, I did um, just make a quick little image to, um, you know, uh, display on the screen here of our sprite sheet of this little spaceship guy here. Um, but um, I, I went ahead and took all that out so we could, um, you know, uh, create the player class and do all that stuff with it. Uh, so keep the sprite sheet though because we actually still need to load the sprite sheet. Just everything to do with the player. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and create a new class and I'm going to call it player. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make two variables private double x, private double y. Okay, so um, what those do um, is, or oh, what those do, these are the x, this is the x coordinate of our player, this is the y coordinate. Uh, if you are not familiar with x and y coordinate, I suggest that you learn that. Uh, I'm just going to do it real quick, just in case you don't um, know what I'm talking about. So, if you have a room here, uh, this would be the x coordinate right here. Actually, let me try and do this. This would be the x coordinate, and this would be the y coordinate. So, if you had a uh, position uh, uh, x 100, it would be 100 to the right, and y 100, it would be 100 down. So, in math class, actually, uh, it's if you have a coordinate plane, um, and if you already know this, you can, uh, I guess, you can skip ahead. But um, so, on a coordinate plane, uh, I believe this going down would be negative and going up would be positive uh, on the y-axis here uh, but that's flip-flopped in Java or most programming at least uh, down would be positive and negative would be up uh, the left is still negative and the right is still positive um, so just take that in mind or just keep that in mind so if you had a position 100 100 so 100 X 100 Y it would go 100 to the right and 100 down that's basically what it is uh, so, we're going to go ahead and create a constructor here. Double X. And I'll, I'll go ahead and explain to you what this is now. Uh, so, a constructor, if you actually don't know what a constructor is, it's just if you refer to GameMaker. Uh, now, I'm using GameMaker just because I do teach GameMaker on my channel. So, if anybody's switching over from Java to GameMaker, or I'm sorry, to GameMaker to Java, then uh, you might be able to relate this. But uh, in GameMaker, there's a create event. And what the create event does, for those of you that don't use GameMaker, uh, it's basically when the object is created, or a class, same thing, um, when it's created, it's going to call that create event. So it happens right away. Once it's initialized, um, it calls the constructor right off the bat. So it's actually going to call this method just by initializing the player in the game class here. Uh, so these are parameters here. And now the parameters. Um, we're going to say this.x equals x and this.y equals y. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to initialize our player in the game here. And we're going to set our x and y coordinates of our player in uh, while initializing it. So what we do here, this.x equals x, is we're saying this.x, so this x up here, is equal to the x we set in the parameter. And then same thing with the y. This y is equal to this y. So now when we call player, so we could say p equals new player. We won't do this now, but in the uh, game class here, we could say 100, 100. And that is x100 and y100. It's setting this x to 100 and the y to 100. Okay. Uh, so now what we're going to say is public void tick and public void render. Render. And in here, graphics g. Okay, so tick is just going to be the update method here, and render is going to be, uh, you know, drawing out our image. So we go back into the game class here. We have our sprite sheet, but now in Java, um, if you never made a project in Java yet or a game or something like this, you may not know what I'm referring to. But if you have and you're kind of new, not new, but you kind of know what you're doing, but you know, want to get in into a better path um, you may have used static variables so public static int x you know and what this would 
it would it would be a ton easier for you to say initialize an X here and then go into your player class and say game dot X equals whatever you know uh, so you could easily access that that variable that we set in the game class here you may use that but in Java the correct way of or at least one correct way of passing variables to one another is using getters and setters um, so usually they put the getters and setters at the bottom of the page here or of the uh, you know your class and to get something we would just need a return value so we just create a simple method that returns what our variable is so in this case we want to return um, our sprite sheet because in our player we want to access that sprite sheet so we know what buffered image we want what's what you know because if if you remember here we we initialize the sprite sheet ss equals new sprite sheet and if we go into our sprite sheet class here it does have a parameter of our buffered image and that will be our sprite sheet which we initialized up here so if we were using this class all we would have to say is sprite sheet but now we can't use that in the player I can actually here I'll put it in here we can't actually use this in the player because there is no sprite sheet variable and that's where people might use static um, but we're gonna be using again getters and setters so yeah we're gonna do that now so in our game here I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the bottom here and we're gonna I'm gonna create a simple method public buffered image get sprite sheet that's what I'm calling it no parameters and in inside we're just going to return sprite sheet there we go uh, and now in our player here what we also need to do in the parameters is initialize our game our uh, game class here and we're gonna say uh, sprite sheet ss equals new sprite sheet game dot get sprite sheet and that's going to return the sprite sheet uh, so now we can we can now use it um, and you may be asking yourself oh why can't we just use public well you can but that's not good uh, um, what am I trying to say here that's not good habits so yeah um, we make everything private and again if you use static variables um, usually static is only used for finals or constants for you C++ -plusers out there um, and uh, resources so I mean this could be considered a resource but uh, yeah and the reason we don't put this inside our player here and create a whole other sprite sheet we don't really want to initialize it again that would be inefficient to initialize a sprite sheet we already have so I'm gonna go in the player here and I'm gonna create a private buffered image call it player and import buffered image and I'm gonna say player equals ss dot grab image column one row one 32 by 32 and in our render here g dot draw image um, we're going to say player x y and the image observer will be null Now, when you put this in, you will see a weird error, um, and there, the draw image is is has an error on it. If you oh, if you hover over it, it'll say draw line, and that that is not correct. And that's because draw image only supports um, integer values uh, to put in for the coordinates, and we initialize the x and y as a double. So all we would have to do is cast this to an integer, and um, everything would be good there. All right, so now we can initialize the player here so I'm just gonna say private player P and in our init method below uh, this must be below what our sprite sheet loader where it actually loads it because we are using the sprite sheet so if you put initialize our player above this it would not work so P equals new player we give the coordinates we'll say 200 200 and then this and we put this because we refer to the game here and in game we're referring to this class so yeah 
Now what we do is in our tick method, we say p.tick and in our render p.render and our g as our parameter here. So we played it now. As you can see, we have our player in game uh, getting about 2000 FPS and that is pretty sweet. Uh, we can actually put some animation onto this here. Just if you want to play around with this, we could say x plus equals or yeah, x plus plus. Let's do that. And we play it. As you can see, now our player is moving to the right. And this is happening because we are updating the tick method of our player right in here which is getting updated 60 times per second, which is right here in our game loop. So go me like, go and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. We didn't get into keyboard input this time. We will next tutorial. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Go ahead and leave a like, go and subscribe. And I guess I just said this three times in a row, but I will see you guys next time. Peace.